This is Twit. All right, the ongoing look into the scope of Russian interference in the 2016 election has put a number of major tech companies under the microscope. We've heard about this for months now, and many are changing the way that they operate as a result of the related discoveries. Joining us to talk about the twists and turns of Twitter in light of these investigations is Kurt Wagner from Recode. Welcome, Kurt. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. It's great to see you. It's been a while. It has. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you back. So Twitter is facing scrutiny, not only from uh, Robert Mueller, P Mueller's probe, but also from the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, lots of committees in there. Uh, what kinds of discoveries have come out of all of that scrutiny in the recent months that's affecting Twitter right now? Yeah, so what we know about Twitter is that there was uh, kind of a bot network that was, uh, you know, these accounts were linked to Russian sources, I guess, and, and they were spreading misinformation through this bot network. Um, and then there was also these kind of Russian-sponsored publications um, that were paying for ads and, and promoting them on Twitter as well. And so much like Facebook and Google, uh, Twitter kind of came to this realization, obviously, much uh, later after the fact, after the election, that all of this was going on. They're going to be uh, testifying next week along with Facebook and Google um, in front of all those committees that you mentioned. And so what they're trying to do is is kind of get ahead of that. And so they're, they're announced, um, I'm trying to think, was it two days ago, I guess, uh, a couple of changes to their um, ad platform and how they're going to kind of disclose all of the ads that are running on Twitter, especially political ads. Uh, Facebook has kind of announced it's going to do something a little bit similar. And so what you're seeing is these companies trying to basically say, hey, look, we're going to self-regulate our own advertising. Uh, you know, the government, you guys don't have to do this, even though you want to do this. Look, at we're, we're going to do it on our own. And they're trying to get a lot of this in place before they go to D.C. next week so that they have something to, you know, hold up and show uh, all these members of Congress who are going to be grilling them. Time and time again, uh, between Facebook and Twitter, especially, you hear you know bots kind of come into the the conversation when it comes to kind of this influencing this propaganda effort. You know, bots are very very involved. Bots are a big part of these platforms. It wasn't it wasn't it just two years ago that bots were all the rage and everybody was talking about how this is the next thing to get really excited about in technology. Yet with that comes a lot of power, obviously, and inf and the potential of influence. Um, how much of a hand do you think bots have had in this particular influence or uh, interference? And I mean. Is there any kind of reality for Twitter, for Facebook to just like get rid of bots to, to feel like that's the only solution here? I realize it's not, but what do you think about that? Yeah, it's a little bit tough to quantify, right? Which is what makes this whole thing really interesting is that you, you can say, hey, look, this much was spent on ads or there were this many bots that, you know, Twitter found that were linked to Russia. But really, it, it's hard to quantify what kind of an influence that might have had on, say, your average voter in uh, Michigan, right, or in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what the challenge is, is, is Facebook has these big numbers, right? It comes out and says, hey, there was $100,000 spent on ads. And, and for the average person who maybe doesn't understand digital advertising, $100,000 is feels like a lot of money. Um, obviously, to Facebook, it's not a huge amount. But uh, you know, and it says, hey, these this content could have reached 10 million people. Um, again, what does that really mean? We just don't really know. So I think the bot thing plays a big role in the sense that uh, Twitter has pointed to bots and Facebook has also pointed to what it calls inauthentic accounts, basically accounts that aren't, uh, you know, tied to an, a real life uh, human being who uses their who's using their true identity or a real life business that's using its true identity. Um, so clearly there was, you know, these quote unquote fake or bot accounts that were set up. But I think, um, you know, while Facebook has always been about trying to remove that kind of stuff and saying, hey, we want everyone to use their true identity here. Twitter has kind of let bots be a part of uh, the platform, right? Like there's a there are, in theory, good bots, bots that retweet, um, you know, certain, uh, you know, presidents, I guess. Right. Or, hey, every time Donald Trump likes a tweet. There is a bot that will, you know, tweet that tweet out and say, hey, President Trump just liked this tweet. And, and people get value from that. So I personally think the value isn't as, as great as, uh, you know, the risk, so to speak. So I think for someone like Twitter uh, to go in and kind of purge its site of bots seems like a pretty good idea to me. Um, but I think it's also there's a little bit more of a history there and then there would be like a Facebook um, or someone else. 
So Twitter said that they were estimating to make $1.9 million. That's what they projected from global advertising just from RT. And they, you know, they said, we're giving that up. Um, and, you know, you've followed Twitter for a long time. And they're, they're, they've they're said this uh, at the same time that they're now being forced to talk to Congress about it. Do you think really that they, do you think they had any idea what was going on? What, what do you think they knew uh, about how much uh, RT was trying to influence or not influence. How, how much do you think they knew before? Man, I'm a little I'm a little afraid to to speculate just because I don't know what I can guess. And and what came out this morning, you mentioned the RT thing. Um, I mean, RT came out and and showed these pictures of a slide deck, right? That that Twitter um, supposedly pitched them and said, Hey, we want you to come advertise on Twitter, um, here are, you know, here are the benefits of doing so. So it's, it seems very clear that it's not as if they didn't know RT or Sputnik were spending money on the platform. Uh, the question is, did they realize that, you know, there was the connection to the Russian government and, and extended beyond that, was there a, uh, you know, actual motive here to, to try and influence the election? Um, I would hope, of course, that Twitter did not know that, right? Like if Twitter knew that this was happening and was still encouraging this this uh, company to to spend a, really a small amount, I mean, $1.9 million, that's I think since, what, 2011 or something I read, I could be wrong, but like that is over many years. Mm -hmm. That is not significant revenue for Twitter. So for it to like jeopardize its whole reputation by knowingly encourage someone to influence the election, I think would be crazy. So my hunch is that they didn't know but they certainly knew that there were advertise there were advertising dollars being spent, um, and so it'll be very interesting for them to kind of explain uh, either why they didn't know RT had this relationship with the government, or if they did know that, you know, what was the what was the impetus be behind kind of pushing them to uh, to spend money? Maybe it's innocent uh, thinking of me, but I, I just kind of feel like it's a it's a case of naivete on Twitter's part, on Facebook's part. Although they have a lot of people that make a lot of money to know. know and understand this stuff on the back end. So if they didn't know that stuff early on, then that says something else entirely about how right. they run their business. And it's and it's it again, it just feels like such a risk for for such a small reward. Right. Yeah. Like. If you knew that that there was uh, this manipulation going on, the, the amount of money I think it was um, two hundred and seventy four, two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that was spent kind of during the campaign, um, it's just such a small amount for for a company of Twitter size um, to again justify like taking this kind of a risk. So, but then as you pointed out, then it becomes what? So you're either you know uh, evil or you're incompetent, right? <laughs> right. And and in this case. I'm with you. I, I don't think there was malicious evil going on, but okay, so that only leaves one other option. Yeah. Well, I think the other option is what they always say is this is free speech. Like we're not going to, we don't want to, you know, we, we don't want to control what people can advertise and what they can't, that, that sort of thing. I mean, that's always their excuse, right? Exactly. But the fact that they came out and decided today that, hey, we're not going to allow this this publication to buy ads anymore shows me that they've decided that that free speech thing isn't, you know, necessarily, uh, it, it crosses some kind of line for them, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're willing to decide now, today, after the election, that RT is no longer allowed to buy ads on Twitter, what's different, I mean, obviously, I, I guess what's different is that we publicly know about this, uh, you know, connection between RT and, and these Russian sources. The, the, so then the question becomes, why wasn't that known a year ago? Well, I think it echoes a lot of their decisions lately that are really just like they held so tight to that. Like people can say they can be anonymous. They can say whatever they want. They held so tight to that for so long that now that they're moving the line, like no one knows where it is. You know, it's everywhere. Like, totally. is this person going to be banned? Is this, you know, is this allowed? Is that allowed? And like, who's making those decisions? It's just, uh, I mean, it's better than, than not making any of these decisions, but it's unsettling, I think. Well, it's tough when you're making it on a case by case basis because it's really hard to be consistent, right? And and uh, you know, how do you treat a celebrity user who's abused and harassed versus your kind of everyday user who who has 50 followers? Like, does the fact that someone has a million followers make them you know more important to act on than than the 50 follower user? Um, those are the kinds of things that you know you oftentimes see with a company like Twitter, and it just makes it really in it, when it's not super consistent. And when they refuse to kind of talk about individual accounts and, and kind of explain, hey, here's why we're taking action here or here's why we're not, 
it just makes it really hard for someone on the outside to appreciate or understand uh, really the challenge that they're going through. And, and again, the consistency I don't think has been there, and that's the big issue. And then how is this translating into how Twitter is doing as a company or just in general how they've been operating their business? I know there were earnings report today. Is this is this kind of Russian ads scrutiny affecting Twitter at all on on Wall Street? I don't think so. Uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting any of the companies on Wall Street, at least right now. I think the biggest concern would be if government comes out and creates all of these really strict regulations could that impact their advertising business a year from now or, or two or three years from now? I think that is more the concern. I think today, right now, I mean, Twitter, as you mentioned, they had earnings this morning. Um, their revenue was right in line with what Wall Street expected. Uh, their user growth was pretty much right in line with what Wall Street expected. Um, they didn't even mention Russia on the call, as far as I remember, although it was like 5 a.m. Pacific time, so I could have been <laughs> a little bit sleepy. But um you know, I didn't hear a single question about that um, unless I missed it. So it doesn't seem to be impacting uh, the the business or the the stock price of these companies right now. But again, I think it all depends on uh, is this going to become a, a more tightly regulated industry moving forward? And if so, I think that's when you're going to see some concern from investors. Yeah, and that's what uh, you know could possibly be kicking off as they uh, go into next week's kind of public testimony. And yeah, it's all uh, it feels like it's all kind of coming to a head right now. There's a lot of change in the air for just big tech in general, and this is a big part of that. Yeah, I mean, next week will be fun. Uh, well, as fun as like, fun. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, government uh, uh, regulation conversation can be, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kurt Wagner from Recode.net. Kurt, it was great having you on again. Where can people follow all your work online? Uh, yeah, you can go to Recode.net. That's where uh, all my work is and my colleagues. And then I'm on Twitter at Kurt Wagner 8. Right on. Thanks again, Kurt. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It. Have Take a great care. night.